Hello everyone, Chris Sawyer here. Welcome back to the Varietal Show. We are talking Riesling today for a moment. And uh, actually, for all the shows that I do, uh, I'm actually down in my cellar right now uh, with the great Daedalus Hal, who I will go into in a moment because this man is uh, one of my genius friends. Um, but, uh, you know, I wanted to start the show off today um, and just do a little toast to um, Riesling because today technically is International Riesling Day. So all you Riesling fans out there that know anything about Riesling, you know, God loves you, you know, in some way, weird ways, you know, that this is actually working because Riesling is really one of the greatest old school kinds of uh, grape varieties that there are. And this one in particular is very special to me because this is a fa fabulous um, uh, brand that we know and it's actually from Colorado. These are my great friends, Jamie and Steve, uh, that produced this. This is the Storm Cellars. I did a great show with them. If you get the chance, please look up their website on Instagram and watch the show that I did with them just recently. But Riesling, to me, is one of those wonderful wines that really started a whole trend here in California. But where did we learn it from? Germany and, and Austria and these different places um, in, in the other part of the world. But the fact is, does it go good with food? Yes, it does. And that's the wonderful thing about it. Daedalus Howell, you are here with me. Um, you are a great food lover. You are a foodie like me. Um, sure. And it is wonderful to have you on this show and to drink some fine Riesling with you. I will now take my mask off as well. Um, you know, we're down here in my cellar. Um, you've been down here a few times, um, have you not? Uh, indeed. Uh, more than I can count. <laughs> yeah. uh, but what I, why I brought Daedalus on, um, so Daedalus Howell is a great um, author. He's an author of books, an author of of many stories and he is actually the editor of the bohemian um, north north bay and many other publications uh, as well as a great film writer and film and and director um and a star too and he's actually been in bands and i could go on for about a half an hour just about daily self but the fact is he's been down the cellar many many times and i felt like this would be a fun show to do it with Someone that is a journalist like me, um, that we get to talk about all sorts of things, you know, with the winemakers and the, you know, the, the great sommeliers and chefs that I talk to. But Daedalus and I have grown up together and we've had some crazy um, heritage um, together. And, you know, this last year, Daedalus was um, a hard one uh, for everyone, all of this audience out there. The 2020 was um, uh, more horrific than we ever thought. Um, and there were many reasons for that. But you are a journalist and you are the editor of a number of publications um, in the North Bay. And uh, what, you know, what was it like for you? Well, it was a big change. Um, it uh, being such a newsworthy year across the board and having to go through what we have gone through as a culture, uh, not only did it change the stories that we tell, but how we tell them. And so that meant uh, just from a procedural point of view, like not having an office, not going into the office. Not necessarily being in the field all the time or uh, how do you do an interview everything's turned to zoom and all that and and so the way we make the news uh, uh has changed and i think in some ways for the better it's a much leaner uh a little meaner uh but uh a lot of resources that would be other ways to be put into real estate mm -hmm. we're able to put into reporters and that kind of thing and tell more stories more interesting stories of course there's been like the story <laughs> which is the pandemic and all that yeah and uh, that that's strange because the news cycle it, it ebbs and flows right with any yeah. news cycle. So this one is like nothing's happening. It's oh it's getting terrible. It's getting worse. And then boom, big news. And then it plateaus. And then big <laughs> news. Plateaus. And it's so it, that's been sort of interesting. It's kind of like sometimes there's not enough stories, right? You know, but sometimes there's too many. So. Yeah, you know I I got to write a great story for you this past year, and um, it, you know you and I grew up um, going to film festivals and. Um, you know, you've always been a great um, mind as far as film, so is my wife, Simone, and, and uh, we all get along. I mean, geez, we worked on projects forever um, together, and, you know, my Cal Calman Apple, my, my great um, cousin who was nominated for an Academy Award, who you got to know down in uh, Los Angeles as well, but the fact was that I wrote that story for you, and this story, you guys, was about um, documentaries on music, um, and, you, you know, the, the Go-Go's um, uh, documentary came out, there were other, you know, great
great documentaries that changed my life. There was one on Athens, Georgia that it was just amazing. I mean, where did REM and B-52s come from? And, and all of these kinds of great things. And how did I learn about that? To be really honest, um, that was actually done out in Tamales where we were invited <laughs> out to an oyster place. And it was awesome. Um, and that's where I saw it for the first time. So, you know, when you're at home, as you were a lot um, in 2020, you know, watching documentaries was a very cool option. It actually, I learned so much more. You know that I'm a DJ and you've been down here with the vinyl and, and oh, everything yeah, I'm <laughs> so many times, you know, with the racks and stuff of vinyl down here. But the fact is that if you don't have anyone to watch it or to listen to it with, then you can watch these great documentaries and learn so much more about um, musicians and bands and. You know, the, the one that I did also, there's the L.A. scene, you know, with the Whiskey A Go-Go. I mean, you want to watch a, an amazing documentary on an area like Los Angeles and, and to really learn about how did Whiskey A Go-Go go from the house band was this band called The Doors. <laughs> you, ever, you ever hear of them? And then how it went from that point into the, the alternative punk rock, um, hair metal, everything that came through there it was just amazing but the same thing with um i want my mtv which was another documentary that i included in that article mm -hmm. that i got to see at the napa valley film festival just before this whole pandemic started so they always said appreciate you um uh, having me write that for you and and it was you know how much i love music it, it was a great piece and, I, and i'll tell you one of the secrets of uh, mr sawyer if i may reveal it is that before you were you were a wine writer you were a music writer Yep. And I uh, used to write it, uh, I think a David, well, uh, a probably, Davis, probably yeah, the Oakley Davis. too, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, the Oakley, yeah. <laughs> but, but in, so that, and that's, that's what's interesting. You, uh, you, you're a wine guy and people know you as a wine guy, but you were a writer first, right? Yep. And wine became your expertise and your passion, clearly, and you write eloquently about it, but your music writing is just as good. Thank you. And I think there's something fascinating about that interrelationship, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I always say, you know, people say, well, what, what's your favorite wine? I'm like, oh, what's music playing? You <laughs> know, what's this time of the day? Who are you with? What is the, what is the season? You know, like you can pair music with all those things and you can pair wine with all those things. It's thinking outside the box and actually bringing them all together. I'm, I think I was very lucky for having the, the start in, you know, way back in high school when I started mm -hmm. DJing and, you know, everything and going to Davis and, and even after that, but you know, this has been a great time, and you've been down here in the cellar many times. Um, this is yeah. um, really, uh, you know, this is a house that was built in 1885, and, and this uh, cellar actually was built in uh, the 1920s, and it was to oh. store the pears in here, um, but, you know, luckily my, my fine wife um, uh, discovered it um, when I <laughs> never came down here as a, as a kid, but when she was considering moving in here, um, she said, what's down Into there? The house, I, not the cell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, it's funny because we, there was a picture of this area down here that Train Devore, our great friend Train Devore, amazing poet, um, a great scholar and a, a professor actually in Japan, um, he posted a picture a couple years ago of here when there was no wine in here, really. I mean, I had a few boxes of wine, but it's gotten a little bit bigger since then. And I mean, this is just the perspective of a side. And right over there is my other office where a lot of the shows that I do, um, you know, with Cellar Pass and everything, I, I actually film over on that side, over in that corner. So there's a lot of things about this. This has become my office. I kind of like it. I think you're onto something with this. And I have always had a pet theory that the sheer amount of music you play down here yeah. has to have some sort of vibratory influence, like vibratory influence yeah. on the wine. Right? Absolutely. Has there ever been like UC Davis should do a study on this? Yeah. You play so much music that's permeated these bottles yeah. with sound waves yeah. that uh, I can only imagine it's gotten better for it. Yeah. I mean, a lot of punk rock, a lot of '80s new wave yeah. has gone into this particular wine. Absolutely, Absolutely. you can taste it. They've all been <laughs> they're they're aging in these bottles, but they're listening well. Um, <laughs> do not doubt that, you guys. And so, you know, Davis uh, and I just uh, recently met up with our great friend um, Sahar, who owns uh, La Dolce Vita, and your great um, bride to be, Indeed, um, yeah. uh, Carrie, uh, was there too, and, and we had some other f uh, great friends, um, Alethea and, and her um, husband, and we actually, the place closed because there's actually um, hours that we, we need to actually leave, <laughs> but I brought some we bottles, closed, closed and, <laughs> and so nice of um, uh, Sahar to give us plastic cups, and we went off to the side, and we were down near the creek of Petaluma, California, drinking wine and it felt like the old days like the old 
punk rock days and everything that we did, except for we had really, really good wine, and that was really fun. That's a great point. Yeah, we're down by the river, <laughs> like old times, drinking wine like teenagers, yeah. but the, the quality of the wine was much, much better. Absolutely. Sure. So this is tasting extremely good. Yeah. So this is from my great friends, and uh, I, I mentioned their names and the you know their amazing st storm cellar, uh, but, and you can pr really look them up on Instagram. I mean, that's where you're going to find them. And they've got sites on, on Facebook. But the fact is that this is from Colorado. Of all places, you guys, Colorado. And this is from the, the Elk um, West, um, West Elk, sorry. Um, and such an interesting area up there. I mean, working in Telluride uh, with the Telluride Wine Festival, and getting to know uh, these two amazing sommeliers that came out of Denver mm -hmm. um, and really following them. And they're, I mean, you know, I do what I do with wine, but to follow some people that really are so passionate that they actually bought a piece of property in the middle of nowhere, it seems, but made something out of it that is so good. And that show that I did with them was a really amazing show about their rosé. But I'll tell you, this Riesling is cutting edge stuff for the United States. It's really special. And I, and I wonder, and you probably know this, um, if there is something about the altitude that contributes to this experience. Absolutely. I mean, it's a, we, when we talk here in Sonoma County about diurnal swing, mm -hmm. um, the other day I was telling Simone, you know, it's 70, it's supposed to be 70, and then it's supposed to go down to 36. Yeah. Um, you know, the same day. These are the kinds of things that happen up there. You're about, um, you know, over 5,000 feet there. So when we're in um, Telluride, I mean, that's about 10,000 feet high. That's like nosebleed territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're yeah, okay. mile high. You hear about Mile High Stadium. They were not kidding about that yeah. term, you know. And so this has the great ability to really do it. And I feel like that there's amazing... Um, this, this balance of acidity in here is because it does get cold at night and they only have so much, they get um, exposure to the sun because they're not really fog like we have here. Right. But above that, um, and you're, you're there, but it's not that warm either. That's why snow is, if you go higher up, there's more snow, yeah. go figure. <laughs> um, because it's cooler just by nature. It will rise at night, but it will not rise during the day. And so I think that this is, the acidity in here, it's so bright, so fresh. There's a, all sorts of citrusy notes, but also these amazing uh, apple notes that I really am digging yeah. on. Yeah. And, and yellow apple, is that weird to say? Is that golden no, delicious? No, no, golden delicious, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Very crisp, very, very crisp. And actually, when I opened it a little while ago, I felt like it was even more like a uh, pink lady kind of apple. Mm -hmm. Like, it was so aromatic, and it still is. But what am I thinking? Vietnamese food. I want some oh, crazy yeah. kind of spicy tangy food i don't want you know just basic um regular you know uh, stuff that you would have with riesling like in germany yeah. which would be you know hey believe me right now asparagus oh mm -hmm. yeah give me that white asparagus green asparagus just bring it on i'm, I'm happy i'm or happy like, man but a really tart like a uh, white cheddar cheese even you yeah know, like it, we could, it could stand up against that you it know? could really could yeah. and i feel like this is a great culinary thing and you and i have discuss these things so many times, but this is a good one. I'm glad to introduce you to I'm it. I'm really appreciative. Yeah. I'm glad you did. 